Passing a good open guard is one of the most difficult things to do in jiu-jitsu. This is partly because there's so many different variations and so many combinations, it's hard to have an answer for every situation. So this video, I'm gonna give you guys a really simple system you can use that allows you to filter your opponent into one spot that you'll have all the answers for. And remember guys, if you like the content, be sure to like and subscribe to help support the channel. So the main difficulty passing open guard is that there's so many different variations your opponent can play and each one requires a different pass to solve. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on filtering our opponent to one position that we're really good at dealing with. So what I'm gonna do is as his legs are up, I'm gonna step in really deep with my lead leg. This is kind of forcing him to this like De La Hiva or ankle control position and we're gonna build our passes from here. There's two main aspects of this that makes it so effective. The first one is that often if I'm far away, my opponent can move his legs a lot and it's very difficult to deal with these legs to create a pass. As I step in really close, it's like sticking a pipe in the spokes of a wheel. Now as his legs try to loop, it's much harder when I'm close and this leg is in the way, he can't move his legs so it's easier for me to control. Of course, the most common response your opponent will have when I step in here is to grab my ankle or my pant leg and we're gonna build off that. Sometimes guys will not grab this and I'm gonna show in the end of the video how to deal with the situation that they won't commit to this grip, but most people will kind of feel boxed in here and gravitate to this grip. The second aspect of this is that my proximity makes the pass that much closer. For any guard pass, I have to ultimately clear his legs, get over top and chest to chest to finish the pass. So when I'm really far away, even if I clear the legs, I still have all this distance to cover. When I step in early and go straight to this position, now whatever pass I do, I can hit like a reverse leg drag. I am already chest over chest. I can hit a leg drag and I'm already chest over chest. I can start pushing this behind and start dropping. I'm very close to an immediate threat to end the guard pass. So starting from here, there's a lot of different grips he could look for. He can look for this sleeve, he can look for this sleeve, this collar, the belt. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna deny him grips for anything with this hand until I'm ready to initiate my pass. So if he goes for the collar, I'm gonna break it. If he goes for the sleeve, I break. I keep denying and that's gonna annoy him as I start to set the pace for my first attack. Another useful aspect of the basic control mechanics here is I'm denying grips as he's looking for grips. And if he's trying to put this hook in, go ahead and start putting it in, I can always pop it out using my hand or popping my leg straight. And then I wanna turn my foot slightly to the right because now as it's more straight it's hard for him to put in and use in a meaningful way um, also I always want to try to maintain that proximity I don't want to get too far away so if I feel like his leg I always want to kind of stay inside this a little bit right I don't want him to get his foot on my, my hip and start pushing me away so I'm kind of maintaining here you start making grips I'm denying and I'm kind of keeping him crowded and that makes setting up those passes become easier. So the first sequence we're gonna look at is gonna be based off my opponent keeping his right knee close to his chest. When this is closer, it's easier for me to clear it this way or to clear the other leg the other way. This is the leg drag and the reverse leg drag. So when we're here, again, he's looking, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see which one is easier to get. If I feel like this one's easier, I'm just gonna grab the ankle and pop it across really quick. And because I already have this chest over chest position, it's much harder for him to try to recompose throwing this leg. If I'm really far away here, and I clear, that leg can always come back over, right? When I'm close and I clear here, you see I kind of push this in towards my armpit. My right hand just blocks here, keep looping over. It's very hard for him and I'm just coming straight down. When I'm chest over chest, he always has to put something in the way to block. It makes it very stifled for him to move and I work my way in. I'm not going super in depth on the finish of that leg drag because the more the important idea is when you can go for it. There's a lot of finish variations that you can have success with. So the main idea is I just, I'm here, I'm denying, I pop this across. I go in here, use this hand to block this. I push the knee across and dig in. If we wanna go the other way, we may be here and I feel like he's keeping this more open. So now look, I'm gonna pop my knee forward. I can grab the ankle, the foot, sometimes the pant leg, and I'm gonna clear this over. Once I clear this over, I wanna just push this down and again, I start leaning with my chest over chest. If I back up too much, he gets this space. So I stay over here. I'm gonna post my right hand here and I start digging my way in. Okay, so the thread of both sides there work really strong together. Okay, so the next sequence we're gonna look at is our opponent's gonna have his leg a little bit extended. So here, again, I'm just denying grips, but now he has the leg a little bit more extended, and this makes dragging it across a lot harder. It makes the reverse leg drag harder. So I'm gonna deny grips, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look to get a grip on this pant leg. Ideally, if it's for, far enough extended, I like to get my grip backwards because they get a better pressure to push this back, but you can just grab normal as well. If I start to extend here, there's a point where it goes so far, try to bring your leg back, he can't recover this leg now. Right? If his knee's really close and I grab the pant leg, then his foot will come to my bicep and he'll move. But I catch him extending here. I'm gonna grab this grip, I push backwards, I start grabbing the lapel and I just keep driving this backwards towards the floor until I get it to the floor. From here I can start to drop in. He may try to frame my neck and stuff. I use my right shin here to kind of sprawl this leg out and I stay really heavy here 
until I can find a way to finish the pass. Sometimes this may transition into other sequences. I may go here and he starts framing and he brings his knee back tight to his chest to defend and then we may come back up in one of the other originals. But just understanding, okay, I'm denying grips. I start dropping here and trying to pass. So another sequence from here will be our opponent is keeping his leg kind of past my body and shielded a little bit. So when he's here, it's hard to extend because it's still kind of close and it's at an angle that's hard to drag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the foot. I could I grab the foot, the ankle, sometimes the pant. I'm gonna push it down and step over this. As I step over this, I can't prevent him from grabbing my collar. I can do that while I'm tall, but if I trap to fully trap, he's gonna grab the collar. So as soon as I trap, what I like to do is use my left hand here. I'm gonna grab his knee and try to pull it through as much as I can. Sometimes you can push it all the way through and step down and now I can start passing here. But what I want is to disconnect this and now I can start digging an underhook. I keep my forearm tight on his leg and I just wanna lean my body weight into this arm to flatten his shoulder and then I can start shooting a knee cut pass here. So <clears throat> I'm here, I trap, I go, he starts pulling and I shoot my knee cut in. And again, I want my body weight over top of him, not out to the side because he'll push me away. I always need to flatten him to finish. Very often when I'm here, uh, he may try to mess with his hand because he doesn't like this grip. So then I shoot my shin to the side and I drop chest over chest with my knee to the floor. The key to the folder pass here is I want to stay chest over chest because he has to deal with my upper body. While he deals with the upper body, it's hard for him to move his legs. And from here, I have a lot of pass options. If you come around this way, one is if he leaves this open, I can cross face here and I can switch, go around that way. I can switch my right knee into the hip and come up towards the mount there. So I cross face, boom, here and come to mount. Another easy one when I'm in the folder is to just clear my leg here and start coming around that way as well. So of course, sometimes when I step in, my opponent will just refuse to grab my ankle. But the thing is, if he refuses to grab the ankle, he doesn't really have control and it's very easy to force attacks here. If his legs are up kind of high like this, I'll just come underneath both ankles, pin the ankles overhead and I have a really strong stack position. From here, there's different ways to finish. I could shoot my knee across, switch here, and I just drag this leg across. Again, I try to maintain here. I don't back up too far away and I can dig through and pass here. If you like a classic stack here like this, you could start coming through, grabbing the lapel, finishing and digging there. But the main idea is you can stack. Also, if I'm in here and he refuses to grab the ankle, it's very easy to kind of just like the reverse leg drag or leg drag, I can shoot the leg across to either side like this and start passing here. Another really powerful sequence from here is when I trap this leg to go for the knee cut, I switch to the knee. Often your opponent will try to lasso this leg over to stop the knee cut. So now I step my left leg off of this, I switch my right hand to the knee, you can hit a really powerful reverse leg drag and drop to the pass here. So another variable here is that often when I approach the guard, we started with our opponent's center, but some people will be side tilted when you enter, right? And they can go left or right. If he's facing the right and I usually right leg lead, then what I'm gonna do is I look to control this foot and I step in deep just like we did before. And now as he grabs, we're still in basically the same position. I can grab this top foot. He's already turned on the side, so it's natural to start trapping and going into the same system. So the other situation is my opponent could be side tilting on the other side. If he's side tilting on the other side and I step in with a right leg lead, this will be very different. He can like go for a reverse daily heave hook and it becomes a bit different. So the easiest way to mirror that same system would be you could step in with your left leg and now we're just repeating the same thing mirrored on the other side. Uh, if not, then you probably will have to use other threats like Toriando passes to get the guy to center up to force him back to the same situation. So lastly, your opponent can be sitting up. So there's two main ways when he's sitting up, both hands up in the middle or one hand on the floor and it could be either hand on the floor, right? So if we're both hands in the middle, often an easy one is I just focus on his wrists really quick and I drive him back. Now when I get him back, I control the feet because when I lift the feet, he can't get his uh, back up and I step in and I force the position. If he has one hand on the floor, it's harder to drive back because as I drive, he has that hand for support. So often what I do is I look to get two grips on one side, so he'll be looking for a grip. I catch here and because I'm on top, it's easier to win this battle. I catch here and I step to the side. As I do this, he'll very often have to fall back to his back. Again, I lift the feet and start forcing my way in. If you stand up. If if I go here and he doesn't try to fall to the back, then he starts risking exposing his back for a back take. So almost always as you get around, they will fall back. Again, we filter in and now we're coming back into the same sequence. 
And again, guys, this is a very powerful system that I think if I give you one answer for how to quickly try to deal with the open guard as a whole, this is great. But realistically, of course, you're gonna need multiple different passes, multiple different weapons, but this functions as a good one-stop uh, method for just trying to deal with the open guard. So now I'm gonna include a bunch of sparring footage demonstrating all these techniques being used in sparring. If you guys like the content, be sure to like, subscribe to help support the channel. Thanks.